Hey guys, welcome to the Daily Bits. Glad you're here. Glad you're stopping by. We're going to talk about video games for a moment. Just a moment. Just a moment. Then, then you can move on to the next thing. Unless you want to stay and hit that subscribe button, which would be amazing. So, every year around December, it's usually the first part of December, there's a little show called the Video Game Awards, or the VGAs in short, uh, hosted by Jeff Keighley. Now, Jeff Keighley's been in the industry for, good lord, I years, many, many years. He's been trying to make this thing a thing for a long time, um, to varying degrees of success. Um, it's not perfect, that's for sure. Um... And it is memeable, quite memeable, and cringe. But for some odd reason, I can't seem to not not watch it. Like, I feel like I have to. I feel like as a gamer, I should watch it. Even though most of it is ads, as well as uh, bringing on celebrities that have nothing to do with gaming. You know, like Al Pacino. He came on last year. I don't know why. He's, he's just shown up. Al Pacino. Everyone. Um... It's definitely interesting. It's definitely interesting. Um, and when I say it's cringe, uh, what I mean by that, there's a lot of ads in this stuff. There's a lot of ads. And I mean not just gaming ads. I mean ads for anything you can think of. If you want to shave your balls, there's an ad for it. Uh, if you want to change your gender, there's probably an ad for it. I don't... That's it's probably what there is. Uh, there is a lot of pandering and stuff like that, too, if you're into that. Uh, I don't really care. It's it's fine. It's fine. You can have furries or whatever come on. That is perfectly fine to me. I don't care. Um, but there's a lot of that. There's a lot of pander verse going on with the Game Awards. But that's not really the problem with the VGAs. The VGAs, the biggest problem is the fact that it is more of a popularity contest than it is a game award show, which should be treated like an award show, like... You know, making the awards very important instead of the world premieres. Now, world premieres, they have the world premieres of all the newest games or expansions uh, that are coming out with the next couple of years. And, you know, they're hit or miss. There's been some pretty big announcements. I think Elden Ring was actually, um, they shown a world premiere for that whenever it came out. And there's Death Stranding 2. Uh, Kojima, you know, he's a part of this because he's buddies with Jeff. Um, so... You know, there's a lot of cool things that does come out of it. Um, some of the music stuff is cool. I mean, if you like Imagine Dragons for the 10th time, or uh, they had Hozier last year and somebody else. Um, the music's really not that bad. It's actually pretty cool. I, I don't know why people hate Imagine Dragons. I, I still can't figure it out. Like, I just don't understand. I don't love them, but I don't hate them. But they're usually there for, <laughs> for most of the time. I don't know how many times Imagine Dragons has been on the VGAs, quite a few times, I believe. Yeah, quite a bit. Um, the The world premiere trailers is mainly what I watch it for. I'm pretty sure a majority of you guys do, because uh, the awards are pretty much an afterthought when it comes to these events. Um, first, it's advertisers. That's first, then world premieres, and somewhere down the line, the awards. Because most of, even some of the awards, like the some of the awards are not even broadcasted on the actual main event um, you have a pre-show where they talk about the games and stuff like that and they give awards then they have like these little tiny uh, awards between the uh, big awards and uh, it just doesn't seem genuine to me it never has and never will uh, one of the big controversies right now is with a game called Dave the Diver uh, which in all intents and purposes does look like an indie game. Now, when you think indie games, a lot of people are probably going to think, well, it's probably some kind of 8-bit throwback, uh, uh, light-hearted, humble game. And that's what Dave the Diver looks like. Now, I haven't played it personally. I've heard great things. Uh, it's been mentioned in the Game of the Year topics, and they're probably not wrong. I've not played it personally. But the biggest problem is, is Dave the Diver is not necessarily an indie game. Uh, it's backed by, uh, I think it's Nacon? Nacon or Nexon? Um, one of those. It's a billion dollar industry, like, company backing this game. It's, it's not, it's not indie. It's definitely not an indie game. Um, it, it looks like an indie game. It plays probably like an indie game, but it's definitely not an indie game. Um, 
it's it's something. It's something. Um, but it's in there with like the best indie game of the year. And I don't really necessarily think it belongs there, considering the fact that it's definitely being backed by a billion dollar company. Um, indie games are really not that. Usually indie games is a small studio coming out with their games, like but it doesn't have huge amounts of money thrown at them. Um, but there's this is a big controversy right now with that. Um, now I've been keeping an eye on it and it does seem like, uh, Dave the Diver is really good. Um, I'm not going to doubt that, but I, like I said, I don't think it deserves to be the best indie game. Um, there should be cases where, I don't know, there should be sub categories in the game awards, like best remakes, because you have Resident Evil 4 in the running for game of the year and it's a remake. Um, it's a tried and true remake and it's very good. It's very good. Don't like if it was on the best remake of the year, it'd probably be between Dead Space and Resident Evil 4. Um, I mean, they're both good, both really good, but not game of the year. Um, uh, that should be tied to something else. Maybe Tears of the Kingdom, Mario Wonder, Spider-Man 2, Starfield. I know some people are going to be like, no, not Starfield, you fucking nerd. You Xbox nerd, don't talk about Starfield. I like Starfield. I thought it was fun. I thought it was good. Alan Wake 2 is in there, which I actually just started Alan Wake 2. I'm really excited. I played through the Alan Wake remaster recently. That way I can get you know caught up again with the Alan Wake verse because I, I love the original game when it came out. And I just started. I'm on the very first hour of the game, and I know there's a lot to it. Um, but, you know... I didn't see a mention really for RoboCop. It's not Game of the Year material, but maybe one of the biggest surprises of the year, honestly, because RoboCop was fucking awesome. I really enjoyed RoboCop thoroughly. I mean, I really did. It was fucking cool. Um, but the Game Awards is, it is what it is. It's nothing special. Um, they consider it the Super Bowl slash Oscars of the game industry but it's not really that it's kind of like in the middle it's kind of got this uncanny valley feeling of what should be what it should be and it's definitely not what it should be um you know maybe if they do away with all the ads uh all the sponsor stuff that they keep on bringing in like i really don't want right guard to take over a majority of my fucking video that i want to watch about some video games I don't want some kind of fucking weird ad. I just want to watch video game stuff. I know you gotta have the, you gotta make the money, you gotta pay, make the, pay the bill somehow. But still, kind of sucks a little bit. But guys, thank you so much for watching. I definitely appreciate it. I'll see you soon.